I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at JJ's on the Plaza. We're going to begin our chat with the chef with their restaurateur and founder, Jimmy Francais. Jimmy, thank you for inviting me into your kitchen. You're welcome, Bonnie. Thank you for being here. We we worked together yeah. before. You said we're a, a bottle of champagne. We have a little history. We have a little history. Okay, so let's talk about the history of JJ's. Okay. Um, well, I was in the Mexican food business uh, for a number of years. Um, this restaurant became available, and I've always loved the building. It's beautiful. And just the, the, the feel of the space. So I took it over in February of 1985. And always had in the back of my mind the idea that I wanted a restaurant that I could build a wine list because I've been into wine since college. And uh, this case, this presented a great venue for me to do that. It but did. first, I had to get the, the restaurant back up and running as what it is today, which is I call it an upscale bistro. Uh, it's it, it is fun. That's dining. the concept. It's yes, it's a good feel, but you can. Our dress code, we tell people, is tuxedos to tennis shorts. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about the food. Has the concept of the food changed over time, or? You, you know, Bonnie, not a lot. There are uh, items that are still here that we developed when we were first starting the restaurant. Nice. Uh, one of them being paco shrimp, which has been on our menu for 27 and a half years. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and it's, it's known around town as one of the best appetizers, very unique. Uh, so we started there. We always knew that steaks would be a part of this. We are Kansas City. Red meat. We're in Kansas City. Right. People that come from out of town, they don't come here especially to eat seafood, although our seafood is flown in fresh every day. Every day. It's just amazing what you can get now. Uh, and we do pastas. But it was, it was, a, a, steaks are what we're known for, but we also are known for salads, the appetizer list. So some of that has evolved over time. Okay. But, but steaks were always a mainstay here. And the wine list developed before we even started the I restaurant. Say that. Before we even started the restaurant. And since the wine list has grown and the restaurant's developed. Okay. So, so let's talk about your very impressive cellar. I mean, you're noted. You're noted, noted for your wine cellar. How did you build that? What is your? I mean, this is a passion. It has to be a passion. It, it absolutely it's has. A to pa be. Okay. So how did you build it? What What did you want for your diners here? Well, uh, you, there's a number of things that you want. Uh, uh, I, I personally used to be a complete francophile, so Bordeaux, Burgundies. While I still love those wines. Of course. I've moved more to the Italian side, part of that being because I found out my family 10 years ago, we found out we were from Italy. Okay. So I've started to go to Italy more Your roots. than France, yeah. right? People in the United States want California they wines. They do, they do. Now they want Washington State wines, Oregon wines. Yes. Uh, we even have a couple of Missouri wines. They're not our biggest sellers. No, but, but they're here. They're here. Okay. And uh, so we like to give people that come here to have dinner or diners we want to give them a selection. And one of the neat things about this, this restaurant is when you come in, everybody that gets a menu gets a wine list. We go from very low end yes. to $20,000 bottles. And uh, uh, the idea is for, to, to give people a selection. And that's what this list is about. Okay. So how did you get into savoring champagne? Because that's impressive, and it's a rare talent in America. Well, it, it, uh, people can do it, but I happen to be one of the only 12 members of the Club de Sevier left. You know, Julia Child was one of us. I she, did not know that. And she, okay. she passed away. She but they, Moe and Chandon brought this club to the United States in 1991. And they were inducting people around the country, restaurateurs, people in the industry. Well, somebody was in the restaurant one night, and I used to do it with a butcher knife out of the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> That's literally how I learned. And well, friend, Napoleon had what swords to right. do it, so. Well, you know, the history of the club is that Napoleon would give his generals, before they would go into battle, 
bottle of champagne. It was a big fan of champagne. May have accounted for why they lost, yeah, lost the so many times, yes. And they would supposedly pull their sabers out, break the top off the bottle. No corkscrews. No, none no, of that. No, no. Just yeah. break it off, drink some, Go head out, it. head out to, to battle. So uh, Moe and Chandon brought the club here, and they presented each of the people they inducted with a short, a sword from Moe You have a Chandon. beautiful sword. Yeah, you do. and it's real fun. So what we were going to do from here is talk to your chef. Sure. And then we're going to go in the kitchen and make that seafood boulevard yes. that is a signature dish here it, at it, JJ's. It absolutely is. It's so European. So and, French. And it goes with, it's so French goes with so many wines that we pour both by the glass and the bottle. In fact, we took it off once about three years ago. You got ago. in trouble, didn't you? Yes, you we did. did. Yes, you did. Yes, so did. you we learned to, okay. And that's the beauty of JJ's. There are things here that when you come in, you know it, it, it's a, it is that signature dish. You want to count on it being there. But you also provide things for the more adventuresome diner who wants to try something new. And you've done a wonderful job of maintaining that balance of traditional and the something and new. And the new. Thank you, Bonnie. We continue our chat with the chef with the executive chef at JJ's, Grant Wagner. Chef, thank you for inviting me into your kitchen. Sure. Glad, happy to have you. So what was your journey to JJ's? Um, I went to school at LC Le Cordon Bleu in Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh my, that's one of our best cooking schools. So you got the training. Right. Okay. And after that, I did a, a three-month stage at the Blue Stem with Colby Harrells. And uh, just absolutely love his food. I probably learned more in that three months than I did the entire year of school. <laughs> okay, so I hear this. I hear that school's important. There's some basics, fundamentals mm -hmm. to be learned. But being in a commercial kitchen and doing it day after day with a wonderful executive chef really makes all the difference yeah. in the world. Did you go from Blue Stem to JJ's or were there some other? Yeah, I did. Stuff? I um, was. I talked to Leon Ballman and he sent me down here. He's a chef at Cafe Trio. We know he's been on In the Kitchen too. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and he sent you here. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Our chef industry, of course, I love chefs. You all have such a generosity of spirit about your food towards each other. I, I think that's wonderful, and I don't know if that's true everywhere, but it is definitely true in Kansas City. I think in Kansas City it's even stronger. Probably honestly. just because of who we are, just because of who this city is. Right. Are you from Kansas City? No, actually, I'm from a small town just north of Salina, Kansas, okay. called Bennington, Kansas. And now you're in the big city. <laughs> that's you're right. The big city. <laughs> so tell me, what is it that inspires you? Each day in the kitchen, we know it's hot, you're on your feet, you're moving at a phenomenal pace. What inspires you? Uh, the, the local ingredients. When some of these uh, farmers and these uh, purveyors will bring in these wildly foraged or um, locally grown uh, produce and flowers and stuff, it's, it's so much fun to figure out how to use those into a dish, incorporate all those flavors and really accent the uh, Missouri, well, it's like the Missouri eco region. Okay. So you're influenced a lot, of course, by the ingredient, mm -hmm. and our chefs say you respect the integrity of, Absolutely, the, of yeah. the ingredient. <laughs> and so that prompts seasonal menu items, which we enjoy here at JJ's. I got to tour their farms as a blast, too. Oh, it's, good It's for so you. much fun. So, so you've been out to the farms, uh -huh. and you see how they do it. Mm -hmm. Many of them are organic, sustainable. They. I mean, it's good for the earth as well as our tummies. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what, what they're growing. Okay, so the ingredients are a source of inspiration mm -hmm. and part of the creative process. So, you are an executive chef. At one time, you were one of the cooks with a, an executive chef. You're providing the leadership now in the kitchen that you were once the recipient of mm -hmm. at the Blue Stem. So, what is it you're trying to impart to your cooks? I want every single cook to be creative, to be thinking about the food that he's putting out, the history, the ingredients, uh, ah. why it is plated the way it is, and I want them to create their own dishes. The compliments that you get when you make a really good dish, I love. You know, and, and I say this frequently, reminding all of us that when we're at a restaurant and we're really enjoying what we're eating, 
to tell the server, to tell yeah. the chef, oh, I love this. And conversely, if there's something that you would like to be a little different, the only way you're going to know about that is if they communicate yeah, it to you. Okay, so what are we making today, chef? We're making bouillabaisse. Mm -hmm. It's a type of fish stew from the meaty region yeah. in France. There's going to be a crostini, I understand, uh -huh. with saffron aioli. Yes. You know what, Chef? I, I'm hungry. I think you and I need to get into the kitchen, and I think we need to make your signature dish, and I think you need to come with us. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at JJ's restaurant with their executive chef, Grant Wagner. We're getting ready to make a signature dish, a seafood boulevard. Chef, where do we begin? All right, we have our mise en place here. Yes. We like to use seasonal um, ingredients as much as possible. Okay. So these are all heirloom vegetables that are grown here locally in Missouri. Yay for you for doing that. What yeah, else do we have? And This is California halibut, which yes. is in season right now. Yes. Um, onion, leek, some fennel, some celery, and garlic. Mm -hmm. And this is fume, which is a type of fish stock. Okay. All right, so we're going to prep all these to get ready. Okay, yes. go for it, Chef. All right. We first cut up the... Now that is exquisite halibut. And look how white and shiny and there should be no odor with your fish so it's okay for you to ask the fishmonger if you can smell the fish before you buy it oh absolutely, absolutely. You, i believe you should uh, well you should okay. now i noticed you left the root on and now i believe you did that because it helps you control the product exactly yeah. oh chef we're learning so <laughs> many secrets from you okay you want to cut up your vegetables as uh, close to the same size as possible so that they cook evenly. You know, my sister accuses me of doing that because I'm so picky and I want everything perfect. But the truth is, it, it does aid in, in that uniform cooking. And for this dish, I like to um, only shave the garlic instead of mince it. Instead of mincing it. It's more traditional. The heirlooms, actually, I've already concussed them, which means just peeled and de-seeded. And the way you do that is make an X in the end of it. Okay. Drop it in boiling water for 30 seconds to a minute and then put it in ice water. And what you can take the peel right off. I mean, it just comes right off. You're mm -hmm. not sitting there fighting with it. So those guys are ready too. Yeah. You heat it in a pan, you put in some butter. And Whole butter because Whole the butter. pan's not going to get that hot. So I'm okay. not worried about browning the uh, milk salt. And in this the is un unsalted butter. Yes. Okay. Let's remember. All right. So, so how about first? Okay. First, the halibut. I like to get um, it brown, a little bit of a crust on it. To, it enriches the flavor of the entire dish. Uh, and, and one of the things always to remember is to begin with the warm pan. Yes, absolutely. Otherwise, the fish will stick. And now we're going to deglaze the pan with the uh, the wine that we paired the bouillabaisse base with. Okay, all right. So it's a uh, white wine from the south of France because, after all, this dish is from the south of France. Exactly, yeah. All right. So again, it's going to help deglaze the pan. We saute the halibut in butter, we have sauteed the vegetables, and now we've added some wine, and you did add some kosher salt. Yes. The wine should loosen up everything else that's still stuck to the bottom, which is pure flavor, fondest mm -hmm. flavor. That's, fondest yeah. flavor, fondest flavor. Now that that's deglazed, we'll add the fumé. Okay. And let's talk about what the fumé is. Um, we get a all pretty much whole fish. So we use the bones and the skin from them. Is it a fish stock? Yeah, it's a fish stock with white wine and tomatoes in it. And tomatoes, that's mm -hmm. where we get the color. Exactly. And so you have that, you have that fish stock, uh, or obviously you have the fume made up ahead of time. If we mm -hmm. were preparing this at home, we might want to take a fish stock and then add some tomato and white wine to it if we weren't going to make the fish stock ourselves. Correct. Okay, we're and just trying to make this accessible. <laughs> at home, it's a good idea. You can also take any kind of stock and put it in ice cube trays and freeze it. That is and so And then smart. just use them. You can pop them out individually. I'll add the tomatoes. All right, and again, you work with local growers mm -hmm. and you just sort of broke them up in your hand. And now they're gonna further break down in the, in the space. Oh, you're Correct. adding another little guy there. A bay leaf. Mm-hmm. And. My chef instructor at school said it doesn't matter how big your dish is, one bay leaf is always enough. Okay. It just okay. Seems 
Yeah, and, and now two you sprays add of thyme. And thyme. Mm. Wonderful and flavor. And we'll remember to always pull those sprays and bay leaf out. Yeah, we don't have not good mouthfeel. <laughs> so what, where, what are we doing next, Chef? This is stewed long enough. We can pull out the aromatics, which is the bay leaf. Please don't stew. forget to do that. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> and the two sprays of thyme. Okay. Now we are ready to add the shellfish. Okay. And something to remember is always, always add the uh, mussels and the clams first because it'll take l uh, longer time to cook than the shrimp. All right. So shrimp, because that's a few minutes. And and again to remind our audience that overcooked shrimp and overcooked mussels and clams end up being tough. Yeah. And that's so unpleasant. Now, how do we know when they're ready? They're going to open up and tell us hello. Yeah. <laughs> They talk, they will talk to you. Oh, that's perfect. He says I'm, I'm ready to eat, so pay attention. <laughs> Something else to remember is you should never season a stew that you're gonna put, or any dish that you're gonna put uh, shellfish into before they open up, because they'll release a lot of uh, salt water. I didn't know that. And how did you prepare them? Did you just wash them off? And we scrub them and de-beer them. Scrub them and de-beer them. Please don't forget to do that. All right, and, and to help that along, you t you covered it so that the steam would help Correct. cook as well. All right, all the shellfish are open. We have not seasoned because we know they're going to release salt water. Mm -hmm. So what's next, Chef? Next, we will add the shrimp. And we're remembering to do that at the very, very end. This dish will be ready as soon as the shrimp are cooked. And they just turn that pretty pink. Correct, yeah. And then, and then we know, are we going to do any seasoning? Yeah. Here's a spoon if you'd okay. like to try. Thank you. Okay. And we say this and say this and say this. Please taste your food as you're cooking. <laughs> Don't serve anything you haven't tasted. All right. I'm going to join you. It's, it's good to remember you can always add more salt, but you can never take it out. Well, the flavor, though, I can taste one. Mm -hmm. And I can taste all those wonderful vegetables. And the hint of seafood is already beginning because those little guys have opened up. Uh-huh how sweet they are. We need a little more salt and then uh, for this dish we also have a blend of coriander, fennel seed, and white peppercorn. Let's take a look at this guy. Okay, it's a, say that again please, I'm sorry. It's a blend of toasted coriander, yes. fennel seed, and white peppercorns. Okay, all wonderful seasonings with seafood. Yes. All right, so how much should we be putting in? We'll just put in a pinch of okay, first. And you're right, you can always add to oh, it. Taking it away okay. is a real trouble. <laughs> okay, yum. All right. And you want to add just a little bit more. And you use, again, a coarse grain kosher salt. Correct. I turn the heat down so the shrimp will cook slowly, too. All right, Chef, you know you hear this all the time, but we do eat with our eyes first. So we have everything prepped. How are we going to plate? Okay. Here's the bowl. Yes. I like to reserve the shellfish to place them in artistic, in artistic fashion. Okay, so that wonderful fume and all those sautéed vegetables and sautéed halibut. Ah, the little shrimp. You tried to get away, but you, did, you didn't let that happen, did you? No, you did not. Okay, so now our artistic endeavor. Here we go. Ready. We also learned in school that um, yes, people are more visually attracted to threes or, or odd numbers. You know what? That's true in art, too. Yeah. And in arrangements, we just... All right. So we're respectful of that preference. Very what are you so. doing to those shrimp, and how cute is that? <laughs> I'm just okay. going to. Oh, they're going like to, you know, they're hugging each other. <laughs> there they go. Aren't they Place precious? All right, now what? What's going on here? Here's a couple of uh, heirloom tomatoes. Okay, and three we different had, varieties. And we had used some of them in the sauce in the bowl base as well. These and now we're smaller. using them to garnish, which we're told is is very appreciated when you garnish with what's also in. The dish itself, very pretty. Right. All right, now what else are we doing here, Chef? We have a crostini or a crouton that's toasted uh, with roasted garlic oil. Oh, yum! 
Okay. So that just in the oven, nice did you just and you correct. brushed it with garlic infused olive, roasted garlic infused olive <laughs> yeah. oil. No, that makes a difference. Depth Absolutely. of flavor. Okay. So that little guy's going there. You can place All it right. The edge. And then what next? Uh, saffron infused aioli. And how did you make your aioli? We use egg yolks, just cook them slightly until they okay. uh, are at the ribbon method, which is where they, when you're whisking them, they won't congeal back right. together. Yes. And then you uh, emulsify oil, extra virgin, and um, oil, another blend. All right. And we add, and it's yellow because garlic. we had a, yeah, a little bit of raw garlic yeah. and a little bit of saffron to make that beautiful yellow. And you don't need much because obviously that's a pricey ingredient, but a little goes a long way. Correct. And what are we chopping this little guy with? These are sunflower seeds grown in Lawrence, or oh sunflower my, sprouts. Oh my goodness, I don't know that I've ever seen sunflower sprouts. Yeah, they're meaty, they're very light at the same time. It's, it's a wonderful product. And thank you for uh, using products grown in the area. Oh, of course. I really appreciate it. All right, now what's that in that This is done? white balsamic vinegar. Just okay. a little light dressing over the salad on top. You know, and it's not quite as intense as the regular balsamic, but boy, it sure is full of flavor. Correct. Okay, a little bit of sea salt, had a little toss of what we would call our vinaigrette with the sunflower greens. And look at that beautiful finish. That's that on top. I think that is a photo finish. Uh, and we forget, you can use, um, you can either slice it thin or use a mandolin. Please be careful when you use a mandolin. <laughs> And you can get a beautiful, beautiful thin. We love the radish. Anyway. Those also are grown locally. So this looks good enough to eat. It does. <laughs> Almost. I think we should go to the bar, and I think we should pair this dish. OK, great. Thank you for inviting me into your kitchen. Thank you, buddy. We have just been in the kitchen at JJ's with their executive chef, Grant Wagner. We've made a seafood boulebase, and it's on a crostini with saffron aioli. What to drink with this mixture of flavors? For the answer, I'm going to be talking back with Jimmy France and his general manager, Matt Nichols. Gentlemen, what should we drink? We picked a white pick bowl. It's, uh, I don't know what this is at all. Pickles, a... Uh, Oh, kind of a, I wouldn't say obscure grape, but not one you see all over okay, the place. Okay, maybe that accounts for it. Um, it's uh, from the south of France, which... Very uh, deep south of France. Correct, right yeah. And right the dish next, is from the Right south. next to the Mediterranean, where Ooh. most of those products come from in the Boula Bay. So okay, where, so they say what grows together. It grows together. Yeah, this is close okay. enough. Well, once you catch this. what you grow. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. So from the south of France, tell us a little bit about the grape and the flavors we're going to be enjoying here. Well, uh, pick bull, this is a white pick bull. There are red pick bulls. Ah. Um, but uh, for the most part, when you say pick bull, any more people are going to go for the white. They're going to go for white. Right. This is going to give you uh, kind of a, um, oh, there's some floral notes. Yeah, floral, uh, yeah. some there lemon, some real crispy lemon in there, which really cuts cuts through and goes right along with most of those shellfish that are in the boat. Okay. Very, okay. very good at coming. Uh, um, maybe some slight uh, pit fruit flavors, a little pear, a little mm. peach. Yeah. Uh, a fair amount of acidity too, so it's going to help with cleaning out your uh, palate and getting on to the next bite. Also, screw cap, which is All right, becoming. now I'm learning about right. this, and I've learned that we don't have to worry about forkage and some of the other things that happen. And there's a food-grade polymer. You guys probably didn't know I knew this. Very there's good. a food-grade polymer here so that the wine never touches metal. And it right. is, I'm hearing winemakers, Many are selecting this type of Absolutely. closure. Well, well, this wine, honey, and excuse me for interrupting you, no. but this wine is definitely made to drink young. You don't want to put it in your cellar. You probably could, but but it drinks no, it's, it's a, very yeah, it's for it's a the delicious, impatient. it's a refreshing <laughs> wine drinker. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a great deck wine, too. It is. Okay. okay, a 2011. The dish is made, it's been paired, and now we're going to go in the dining room and talk with the celebrity taster.
Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and we have just been in the kitchen at JJ's on the Plaza with their executive chef, Grant Wagner, making one of his signature dishes. It is the seafood boulebets with a crostini, a saffron aioli. The sommelier has paired it with a picpou from the south of France. To taste this creation, we have with us 41 Action News anchor, Elizabeth <laughs> Alex. Elizabeth, thank you for taking time away to be our taster. Oh, the pleasure is mine, okay. for sure, Bonnie. So your assignment is to taste the boulebets and then sip the wine and see if it works for you. Okay. Okay. I know you're up to do Yeah, this. I think I can handle it. Okay. I need to get one of these little clams because they look so happy. Yeah, they do. <laughs> the clams are happy. They are happy. They are happy. Oh, no wonder they're happy. They're good. Oh, my goodness. Really nice. And you know, you don't need to use a lot of saffron. Of course, you have to rob a bank just to acquire it to begin with. <laughs> but, and the crostini, you know, it, there's so much attention to detail here. There's garlic, there's leeks in here. They've used an amazing French bread for their crostini. Um, so each ingredient is loved and cared for appropriately. And all the, the a nice variety of fish too. Mm -hmm. It's white fish and mm -hmm. shrimp mm -hmm. and clams. Now there's a second part to your assignment. Okay. And that is sipping the wine. Okay. Can you? I can. I'll just have to sacrifice and just do it. Do it. Yes. <laughs> well, to your health. Cheers. Thank and you life. so much. That's nice. It's delicious. Yes, that's very nice. Oh, that is, I am unfamiliar with this. And you know, obviously they're trying to keep French, but, and we do think of white wine with seafood. And for a reason, this is a, a great match. Mm -hmm. You're an anchor, you've done this for how many years? Oh, I'm more than I guess I would want to count, but. <laughs> more more than 25, I think, something really? like that. Yeah, so you know, how to, you know how to do this. I've don't been you? doing it for a while. Yeah, I've seen all kinds of fun changes. and. In the industry, so now I'm told that anchors and reporters are sometimes doing their own shooting, their own editing. You, you can, you are multi-talented. Well, they they call multimedia journalists. There they you do. are. That's what you are. You're a multimedia <laughs> journalist. Well, and you were just telling me before we sat down and started munching away that you're going to Romania. I am. Tell me about this. Well, I have an orphanage there with 13 oh. children that uh, I've known, most of them since they were born. They're ages 8 to 14. Okay. And we are trying to raise a group of Americans who are raising these kids uh, to adulthood in this one little orphanage. So, Tell me who, who is we? A community of people in, in Kansas City? A small City? group of people who uh, have all been connected with Medical Missions Foundation. That's how we initially met these, these kids. And all of them would have been adopted to the United States, but Romania shut down their international adoption program. Uh, so they were sort of in limbo. This is the next best thing. Yeah, this is best as well as we can do. But oh, I love these kids. And they oh, love us. So they, it is a yeah. highlight for them from their American family to come. So we help support them, educate them, dress them. Mm -hmm. it, we've, it's an adoption across the sea. It really, it, it really is. is. Yeah, they're learning English. They're, they're, we're going to be there over the 4th of July this year, so we'll have some 4th of July traditions for them. It'll be a lot of fun. Some American. Um, will we have an opportunity to see this work on 41? Yes. Action? We've come a long way in appreciating I don't know, the earlier, more traditional, more basic foods. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing here at JJ's restaurant, obviously. He has been true to the French traditions, and Grant makes all of this fresh. When you come into JJ's, you order something, it is made fresh, and you can taste it. You can. I've difference. been here many times for lunches and dinners, and get-togethers get with friends and work. It's, it's just a really lovely place in general. You know, earlier in the show, we talk about the great care he takes with his wine selection as well. And I don't know if you know this about JJ, but the man can actually savor champagne. <laughs> I did know you that. You did know that. Actually, I saw that happen one time, and it was amazing. And really he's just so devoted to the food and wine industry, and that devotion has been here for 27 years. I did not realize it was 27 that. years. Um, this well, is, they have gone know, through, I mean, just With just construction with next that, door, and think, they're yeah. not closing their doors, and they are still open. Well, that speaks to the loyalty of his It does, customers. and also yeah. to the fact that he has remained too, true to excellence mm -hmm. here. Well, Elizabeth, I want to thank you for taking time out to be our taster, but also for the wonderful work you're doing. I mean, we are a global community, and 
your work as evidence of that into 41 for bringing those stories back to us. And Thank you and safe trip there and back and we appreciate your time today. Thank you, Bonnie. This was a treasure to me. It really was. Okay. Thank you.